गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग Good evening. Good evening. Okay, finally, this is the last session of this week number three. We are going to end with the topic that we were like having a review yesterday. We are going to talk about the, the adverbs in this case. So we are going to talk about the uh, different adverbs that we have in English. Uh, I sound kind of sick because I am like a little bit sick, but I am okay. That's like no problem right now because we are going to end this session on time. We have a lot of information that we need to to, um, to learn about this topic. So we are going to um, work on that part. Uh, we are going to review the information that we have on the video. In this case, we're just going to talk about different structures that we have with the adverbs. Uh, we are going to know uh, how to apply these adverbs in real life. Um, we are going to work with percentage. Eh, vamos a trabajar con porcentajes. Vamos a ver cómo utilizamos estos adverbios de frecuencia, ¿verdad? Eh, ya que obviamente se utilizan para describir eh, qué tan frecuentemente nosotros hacemos una actividad. So in this case, we are going to see the uh, frequency of these actions and we are going to mark them in positive and negative. Um, and we are going to see some examples with these adverbs of frequency. Um, right now it's a start, uh, starting raining. Um, está comenzando a llover acá en mi zona, así que por cualquier cosa, si hay algún apagón igual que ayer, eh, si falla el internet o alguna cosa por el estilo, ustedes ya saben que es porque eh, empieza a llover acá. So we are going to begin with this topic because we just have one hour and this is the last um, session of this week. And remember that we are going to have just one more week to end this module. Solo vamos a tener una, ses una semana más eh, de sesiones. Así que vamos a tratar de terminar eh, lo que son los temas de esta um, sección número 4 y también vamos a tratar de terminar con el knowledge check but give me a moment I'm looking for uh, the information that we are going to develop right now in this case, we're going to see first the information that we have on the video that we was um, I mean, that we were like reading yesterday. And then we are going to begin with the information that I have for you. So in this case, We have these parts on the video that is like the grammar focus in which we have the advert of frequency. We have different words like always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never. And we have some questions. And I was saying that we have this percentage here. Tenemos ese porcentaje en el lado derecho. Y ahí estamos viendo, ¿verdad? Cuáles más o menos los, eh, las palabras que van en el 100%, 90% o algo por el estilo. Y luego tenemos aquellas palabras que están en la parte baja 
de nuestros porcentajes, que incluso llegamos a tener una palabra que está en 0%, que es el never. And then we had like a structure that we need to use, or in this case, we can use to create a statement. And we are like seeing what is like the elements that we need for these um, statements using the adverb of frequency. And we have this example that said, I always take a shower. Siempre tomo un baño. I, that is the pronoun or the subject, always, that is the adverb, the verb, that is take, and then the complement, a shower. Tenemos, eh, en este caso es como escribir una oración simple, solo que aquí vamos a utilizar lo que son los adverbs. Y en ese caso va luego del sujeto, pero eso lo vamos a ver también más adelante algunas eh, especificaciones de estos temas. Then we have, I never smoke cigarettes. That is another kind of a um, sentence or the, uh, another kind of a uh, structure that we can use for this topic that we have one of the positive words and one of the negative words. And we have here this one that is a example of the percentage that we can uh, find in this topic. And in this case, I'm going to show you a table that is kind of um, similar to this one. Es bastante parecido a esto, pero tiene algunas eh, otras variantes. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos always, that is a 100%. Usually, that is a 80%. Often, is a 70%. Sometimes, is a 50%. Only ever, 25%. Percent, and never, that is zero. Así que, más o menos, viendo esa parte donde tenemos el porcentaje, vamos a comenzar con la tabla. But give me a moment. I'm searching for your document. Okay, here it is. Okay, here we have the topic. That is adverse of frequency. Okay, in this case, what is the adverb of frequency? That is the first thing. So we use <laughs> some adverbs to describe how frequently we do an activity. Good evening. Ok, esto es básicamente para que nosotros podamos describir con qué frecuencia hacemos o realizamos una actividad. Ahora, les voy a mostrar la tabla en which we are going to see the, the frequency or the percentage, the adverb that we are going to use and an example of that uh, adverb. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We have nine adverb of frequency with the examples. Okay, in this case, we have the frequency. Here we have the adverb.
And here we have the example. like this. So, in this case, we have 100%. Tenemos 100%. I mean, this one is here. And in this case, we already know what is the advert that we are going to use for the 100%. Ya sabemos que para el 100% de frecuencia tenemos la palabra always. Ahora, un ejemplo con esta palabra. I always go to bed before 11 p.m. Next one, we have 90%, 90%, and in this case, we have the word usually. I usually have cereal for breakfast. I usually have cereal for breakfast. Then we have the another that is 80%, 80%, that is normally or generally. I normally go to the gym. I normally go to the gym. Seventy percent often or frequently. I often surf the internet. I often surf the internet. Fifty percent. Aquí vamos por la mitad, verdad? Ya vamos bajando. In this case, we have the word sometimes. I sometimes forget my wife's birthday. I sometimes forget my wife my wife's birthday. Now, 30% Occasionally, ocasionalmente, I occasionally eat junk food. Ten percent. Ten percent. Seldom. I seldom read the newspaper. Five percent. Hardly ever. or Bradley. And in this one said, I hardly ever drink alcohol. And 
And the last one that is 0% is never. I never swim in the sea. Ok, en este caso, vamos a, voy a mover esta parte hacia la otra página para que se vea el cuadro completo. Ah, sí. So, in this case, we have this table in which we have the different adverbial frequency that we can use to express or to explain uh, the frequency in, um, or how frequently we do an activity. In this case, I can explain uh, my schedule like this. Tenemos diferentes palabras con diferentes porcentajes y estas palabras las puedo utilizar para eh, expresar con qué frecuencia yo realizo una acción en mi día a día. And in this case, we have 100% and 0%, but also we have um, something in the middle. That is the 50%. Um, we have words uh, in this case that are positive. Vamos a, a marcar las positivas. Que podría ser hasta aquí. I'm going to mark these ones. With, mm, let's see what. With light blue, I guess. Yeah, like this. And these ones with red, because these ones are negative. Y esta del medio va a ser amarilla. Ahora, ¿por qué hablamos de positivo y negativo? In this case, we are talking about not the situation that we are like using in this case, but the word has this positive connotation because of the frequency in which we are performing something. Eh, le llamamos positivo o negativo por la frecuencia en la que realizamos las, las acciones. En este caso, um, el siempre, el usualmente, el normalmente o generalmente, y el um, a veces o frecuentemente, ¿verdad? O bastante seguido lo podemos tomar como connotaciones positivas, ya que está hablando de que algo se hace casi todo el tiempo. Ahora, sometimes, que es a veces, marca la diferencia entre la connotación positiva y la connotación negativa, y entramos a lo que es la connotación negativa. Eh, ocasionalmente, raramente, eh, casi nunca, o incluso la palabra nunca es cuando no hacemos, ¿verdad? O casi nunca hacemos esa acción. Por ejemplo, tenemos acá diferentes frases para poder notar cómo utilizar ese adverb of frequency. In the number one we have, I usually go to bed before 11 p.m. Es algo que yo hago todo el tiempo, ¿verdad? Es mi hora de irme a la cama. En ese caso estoy hablando, ¿verdad?, de que yo ya tengo establecido la hora en la que yo me voy a dormir y eso lo hago todos los días. Next one. I usually have cereal for breakfast. Usualmente o normalmente, ¿verdad? En este caso vamos a darlo como usualmente. Eh, yo tengo cereal para el desayuno. No todos los días, pero por lo menos la mayor parte del tiempo. I normally go to the gym. Normalmente voy al gimnasio. Eh, puede ser dos, tres veces a la semana, cuatro veces a la semana. Eh, I don't know, like twice a week or something like that. Um, I often, o oh, uh, frecuentemente, yo navego en internet. In this case, I think that uh, this is just an example because we are like using the internet eh, almost every day, almost all the time because that is a very important part for um, our lives right now, and also for the job. El internet pues está volviendo como una parte esencial de nuestras vidas y de nuestros trabajos, incluso para el estudio, es una parte bastante importante. Entonces, en este caso, pues ya sabemos que solo es un ejemplo, ya que casi podríamos decir nosotros, I always surf the internet, siempre navego en internet. Then we have 50% that is sometimes. I sometimes forget my wife's birthday. 
a veces olvido el cumpleaños de mi esposa. Ahora pasamos a las partes negativas. I occasion, uh, occasionally eat junk food. Um, ocasionalmente como comida chatarra, ¿verdad? That is like a negative connotation because we are not doing all the time. Sabemos que es, no es algo recomendable, ¿verdad? Comer ese tipo de fast food, pero estamos hablando más que todo del de advert, no de la acción en sí. I seldom read the newspaper. Es como decir que casi nunca, ¿verdad? Eh, o rara vez o en ocasiones muy, muy pocas eh, leemos el periódico. I hardly ever drink alcohol. Esto sí, casi nunca, ¿verdad? Es rara la vez que bebe alcohol. Y la última, never. I never swim in the sea. Nunca nado en el océano. So that's why we are using these uh, words as a negative connotation or a positive connotation. Eh, a veces podemos tener um, ejemplos como I always smoke a cigarette. Siempre fumo un cigarrillo. We know that the action is uh, something very bad uh, for the health, but in this case, uh, we are using a positive uh, advert or a positive connotation of the advert. Um, aquí no hablamos de la acción en sí. Aquí no nos metemos en si la acción es positiva o negativa, sino que básicamente nos metemos en el advert, en el adverbio, si es... Um, de lo que más se utilizan, o sea, lo que hacemos con mayor frecuencia, pues es positivo. Lo que hacemos con menos frecuencia, pues el adverb es negativo, aunque sea una cosa eh, que no es dañina o que es buena para nuestra salud o algo por el estilo. So, we have this one as the adverb of frequency. We have these words, we have some examples. Now, what is the position of the adverb in a sentence? Okay, in this case, it says that an advert of frequency goes before a main verb. Except with to be. Ok, en este caso dice que el adverbio va siempre antes, ¿verdad? De lo que es el verbo principal, a menos que estemos hablando de lo que es el verbo to be. Pero siempre va a ir, ¿verdad? El subject, luego va a ir el adverb y después va a ir nuestro verbo principal. Ahora vemos cuál es la estructura. This structure is subject plus the adverb plus the main verb and obviously the complement. Agregamos siempre nuestro complemento. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. I always remember to do my homework. I always remember to do my homework. And number two, he normally gets good marks. In exams. Él normalmente obtiene buenas calificaciones en los exámenes. Then it says, an adverb of frequency
Ahora, en el primero teníamos que nuestro adverb siempre va a ir eh, antes de lo que es eh, de lo que es el verbo principal. Ahora, cuando estamos trabajando con el verbo to be, vamos a posicionar ese adverb of frequency después de lo que es el verbo to be. Ya no va a ir antes, sino que va a ir después. So in this case, we have the structure. And it says that is the subject plus the verb to be. Plus the adverb plus the complement. Y tenemos los ejemplos. They are never. They are never pleased to see me. And she isn't usually bad tempered. Y también tenemos eh, cómo eh, crear, ¿verdad? Eh, estas oraciones cuando utilizamos auxiliares. Básicamente tenemos tres formas, ¿verdad? Una, donde el adverbio va antes del verbo principal. La segunda es donde va el adverbio después del verbo to be. Y por último, el uso de un auxiliar. Aquí está la estructura. First, we have the subject. Plus the auxiliary. Plus the adverb. Plus the main verb. Ahora tenemos, ¿verdad?, el adverbio casi al final de lo que es la oración. Y también tenemos lo que es el verbo principal casi al final. Vamos a ver los ejemplos. We have, she can sometimes beat me in a race. I will hardly ever be unkind to someone. They might never see each other again. They might never see each other again. They could occasionally be here laughing.
Ok, entonces tenemos tres formas para poder utilizar lo que son los adverbs. Y eh, ya sabemos que una, obviamente, vamos a utilizar, que quizás es la más sencilla, ¿verdad? Donde tenemos solamente el subject, eh, the adverb, the verb, and the complement. Creo que esa es la, como la más sencilla. En la otra tenemos básicamente el subject, el verbo to be, Luego tenemos lo que es el adverb y el complement. Y por último tenemos el subject con el auxiliary, el adverb, el main verb y el complement. Now, we are going to eh, do a little activity. Vamos a hacer una pequeña actividad. Um, vamos a escribir dos oraciones diferentes. Una con la primera estructura. Vamos a ponerlo por acá. I think I can do this one. Ajá. Uh -huh. Like this. Vamos a ver esas dos de acá. This one. And this one. Bien, vamos a hacer dos oraciones. Una con subject plus adverb plus main verb plus complement and the other with subject plus verb to be plus adverb plus complement. Vamos a hacer dos oraciones que lleven esas dos estructuras, las vamos a escribir en el chat y yo las voy a ir escribiendo en el documento. Para eso vamos a tener five minutes. Vamos a tener cinco minutos para poder hacer nuestras dos oraciones utilizando Adverb of frequency with these two different structures. So in this case, it is a 30, almost 30, yeah, 33. In this case, we're going to have five minutes, a 38. A las 8.38, vamos a empezar a colocar nuestras oraciones. And then I'm going to read them and we are going to write it on the document. And then we are going to have the attendance list. So. You have five minutes right now to complete the activity.
Okay, it's time to read and write your uh, examples. So I'm going to write some of this at the end of the document. So let's see what are those um, statements. I'm going to make it like a list. So give me a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one, I usually wake up at, at 5 a.m. He's always happy. I usually eat breakfast at 7 a.m. My father always watched TV at... Mm, we can say noon in this case. I'm going to use the word noon. I always drink water in the morning. I often have lunch at 1 p.m. My sister usually listens to music at 5 a.m. Mm, in this case, we are going to change the word because uh, you are kind of using negative connotation words. So in this case, we can use my mother. Mm, seldom. Mm. Mm. Let me see, let me see. Is sometimes, I guess. Mm. No, I don't think it is. We're going to say up. At 5 a.m. He is hardly ever sad.
she occasionally works. Okay, and we have some more examples. But in this case, we're going to have these ones uh, here on the document because um, we have a lot of uh, statements and we are going to have more time writing these uh, statements. So thank you for your participation. You are doing a great job. So we're going to have the attendance list. Vamos a pasar la asistencia. Andrea. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Daniela. Present. Okay. Dennis. Present teacher. Thank you. Eric. Guillermo. Present. Thank you. Ismael. Present. Thank you. Joel. Present. Thank you. Jonathan. Luis. María Salomé. Present. Ok. Marvin. Mayra. Present. Thank you. Noé Danilo. Present. Thank you. Pedro. Present. Thank you. Walter. William. William tuvo un inconveniente, Miss. Ah, ok, thank ah, you. Ok, thank you. Ok, very good. Muy bien. So. In this case, we are going to end with this topic of the adverb of frequency, but first we need to see what is the activity that we have on the platform. We are going to perform the last activity of the section number four. Vamos a completar lo que es la sección número cuatro con esta última actividad que está relacionada con los adverbs of frequency. So we are going to see what is the activity that we have on the platform and we are going to complete the whole thing right now. Remember that we have two uh, knowledge checks that we need to complete. Like uh, the first one is related to unscrambled sentences and the second one is related to a uh, reading part. So we are going to begin with the 4.9, 4.9, donde tenemos que ordenar las eh, oraciones que tenemos por acá para descubrir qué es el mensaje, ¿verdad? O cuál es la idea principal de esas oraciones. So we have just three sentences. Um, we have the number one, number two, and number three. So I'm going to give you like two minutes to... Uh, Try to find the message of the statement. Dos minutos y me dan la respuesta de estas tres oraciones. So, let's see.
Okay, let's see what is the answer for the number one. ¿Cuál es la eh, respuesta o cómo nos quedaría la frase en la número uno? I hardly ever eat a snack at work. Okay, I hardly ever eat snacks at work. Okay. Next one. What is the answer for number two? I I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. Okay. And the last one. I often have dinner with my family. Okay. Very good. Let's see. Everything is correct. I hardly ever eat snacks at work. Number two, I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. And the last one, I often have dinner with my family. Very good. Now, we are going to read the last information that we have here. But for this one, we are going to listen the information and then we are just going to answer the questions. And we are going to listen this one that is called Eating for Good Luck. Vamos a escuchar esta parte de eh, comer para tener buena suerte. Pero en este caso voy a compartirles lo que es el sonido para poder escuchar la información. So, let's pay attention to this one. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll read an article about special foods. You will also develop skills in scanning and reading for details. On New Year's Day, many people eat special foods for good luck in the new year. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are round. Round foods end and begin again, like years. It is a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Greeks eat vasilopita, bread with a coin inside. Everyone tries to find the coin for luck and money in the new year. In Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the new year. On New Year's Day in Japan, people eat mochi, rice cakes, for strength in the new year. Some Americans from southern states eat black-eyed peas and rice with collard greens. The black-eyed peas are like coins, and the greens are like dollars. Okay, in this one, we are like reading something uh, related to the food that people eat on New Year's Eve. Es la comida, ¿verdad? Tradicional o los alimentos que las personas tienden a consumir en, en Año Nuevo, ¿verdad? En este caso teníamos diferentes eh, alimentos como eh, lo son también en diferentes lugares como... China, uh, something that is a Jewish custom, the Greeks, Spain, Japan, and uh, Americans. Eh, tenemos como diferentes tradiciones, ¿verdad? A la hora de, de la comida. And it says that some Chinese people eat tangerines because uh, they are round. And round foods end and begin again like years. Ellos se lo ven como algo que es un círculo, ¿verdad? O eh, algo que termina y empieza en el mismo ciclo, así como los años. 
The next one is a Jewish custom to eat apples with honey for a sweet new year. Es una uh, tradición judía, ¿verdad? De comer manzanas con miel para poder tener un dulce eh, inicio de año. En Greeks, o sea, en Grecia, comen algo llamado basilopita, que es un pan con una moneda en, de, dentro, ¿verdad? Del pan. Everyone tries to find a coin for luck and money in the New Year's. En este caso, ¿verdad? Es como eh, la rosca, ¿verdad? De reyes, donde aparece o una figura, pero en este caso es una moneda. Y a las personas, pues, eh, tratan de encontrar la moneda, ¿verdad? Dentro del pan para poder tener eh, suerte y dinero en el año nuevo. In Spain and some Latin American countries, people eat 12 grapes at midnight on New Year's Eve. One grape for good luck in each month of the New Year. Aquí, ¿verdad? En España y en muchos países latinoamericanos, las personas tienen a comerse 12 uvas a la medianoche para tener, ¿verdad? Suerte, para poder tener quizás 12 deseos, como a veces lo dicen, um, uno para cada mes del año. On New Year's Day in Japan, people eat mochi, that are rice cakes, for a strength in New Year. Ellos comen mochi, ¿verdad? En Japón, para eh, tener fuerza, ¿verdad? Para el nuevo año. And in some Americans from southern states eat black eyed peas and rice with color greens. The black eyed peas are like coins and the green eye like dollars. Esta es como una combinación, ¿verdad? Eh, que representa las monedas y los billetes, ¿verdad? Para poder tener fortuna, dinero, and the new year. Now, for the ending, para terminar, vamos a ver las respuestas. Some Chinese people eat tangerines. Tangerines are brown, sweet, or acid? Brown. Brown, very good. Some Jewish people eat apples with syrup, candy, or honey? Honey. Very good, honey. Greeks eat basilopita bread with a bean, a coin, a rice inside. A coin. A coin. Okay, a coin. Okay, a coin. In Spain, France, or Italy, people eat 12 grapes for good luck in New Year. Spain. Spain. Okay, Spain. Spain. Very good. The Japanese eat chocolate, rice, oatmeal, cake for strength in the New Year. Right. Nice. nice. Very good. Some Americans eat black eyed peas. Black eyed peas are like money, dollars, or coins. Coins. Coins, coins right? Coins. Okay. Let's see. Very good. We have all of them correct. Excelente trabajo. Number one, brown. Number two, honey. Number three, a coin. Number four, Spain. Number five, rice. And number six, coins. Excellent job. Ahora, hemos terminado lo que es la sección cuatro. Um, nos queda nada más una sección y un examen, que es el examen final. Um, we are just going to work four more eight days. We have just four more days. And then we are going to end with this module. Uh, the time it goes really, really fast. So um, we are just going to have four more sessions to complete the whole thing. Um, and I think that's it. We are going to end the session here. Uh, we are going to see each other on Monday. Nos vamos a ver hasta el día lunes para terminar lo que son nuestras eh, cuatro sesiones restantes. So have a really good day. Uh, I mean, have a really good night, and also have a really good weekend. And we are going to see each other on the next session that is on Monday. So see you later and have a really good night. Good night. Good, good, night. Night. good 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 night.